In this video, I'm going to show you every single step it takes to create a painterly photo just like this one. If you're new here, my name is Elisha and I love creative photography, so I make videos about it. And two weeks ago, I shared this video right here where I showed you how you can edit a photo to look more painterly because that's something that I've started to do a lot in my own photography and you seem to like it quite a lot. So in this video, I thought that I would take you behind the scenes of every single step of creating a painterly photo from start to finish. So not just the editing, it's everything. It's the concept, it's choosing colors, it's the props and the outfit, posing, the shooting and the lighting, and of course also the editing. So as you can probably tell, we have a long list that we need to get through. So let's just get started, shall we? First, let's talk about the concept because for any piece of art, it's really important to have a concept or a feeling or just some sort of mood or emotion or something like that in mind before you go out and shoot it. And for this one, I wanted to make it very simple because I feel like in those old cool paintings, there's never really a lot going on. It's more sort of a mood and a vibe they're going for and I wanted to do that in my photo as well. So I wanted to do a self-portrait but kind of have a character or a feeling to go for and that is a really good idea to have that when you're shooting your photo. So maybe you come up with some sort of a character. The character that I went for was a girl who's in love. As simple as that, but it's a very good idea to have something like that to cling to when you're planning everything else because then you can plan the colors around that to fit the mood and the outfit and the props and the pose as well and just to have everything support that story and the story doesn't have to be complicated it can be as simple as a girl who's in love just make sure they have something along those lines just to make sure that there's this red thread throughout it throughout the photo. <laughs> so if you don't already have a theme or feeling or an emotion or a character in mind, I would really suggest that you find one before you continue to the next step. This step is the most important one of them all because the colors in a painting are never random because the painter has to consciously choose every single color that he or she wants in the photo. So nothing is random. So if you see a painting where... Whoa. So if you see a painting with a girl with red hair, for example, it's not random. There's probably a reason why that girl has red hair. Paintings and painters use colors to guide the viewer's eyes and to evoke some sort of an emotion. And you need to do the same. If you want your photo to look like a painting, you have to work like a painter. My piece of art is going to be about love and romance and all that stuff. And the best color to represent that is of course red. So I want to find a color scheme that has a lot of red in it. To make it easier for myself, I always turn to the website peloton.com to create my color scheme. It's completely free and in here you can drag around the balls and it will kind of generate a scheme for you. So as I already said, I know that my main color is going to be red, but I also know that I still want more colors in my photo. So to do that, I'm going to click this button right here where you can see three balls and this will actually generate in an analogous color scheme. So this is just the three colors that are closest to each other on the color wheel. So I know that I'll be having some skin color in the photo. So that might be the orange right here. And then I also can have some purple in the photo so that I have both colors on each side of the red color. Now, if you click this button over here where it says add complementary color, it will actually do exactly that. It will add a ball over here on the opposite side of the red color. So the complementary color to red is green. This means that if I just add a splash of green in my photo, it will actually stand out a lot more because the green is a complementary color to red. So those colors will really pop when they are placed next to each other. I already know that I have some flowers that I could use in my photo, so that could be a great way of adding that splash of a green color. So we actually ended up on a split complementary color scheme. If none of that makes sense to you, I have a video right here all about the basics of color theory and you can go check that out if you're interested in learning more about it. To wear 
this pink dress that I in Photoshop later can turn into more of a purple color to fit a little bit more into the harmony. And then I'm also going to wear this wig just because it's a little bit more whimsical and fairy tale like and dreamy and it just looks cool. So that's what I'm gonna wear and then I just put on a full face of makeup like my everyday makeup, nothing special. Because I'm not a makeup artist or anything, just to make my face look better. <laughs> and then I'm also going to be using these flowers as a prop, just like, I think I'm just gonna be holding them, something like this. I'm gonna experiment a little bit with it, but it just fits very well into the theme and the color scheme as well, because we have the red roses and then we have the complementary color green. I'm just popping in here to let you know about my new course for beginners called Creative Photography with Elisha. If you're a beginner who's interested in learning more about creative photography and doing it as fast as possible, I've gathered all my knowledge and all my techniques that I use on a daily basis into this course that will just make it as simple as possible for you to do what matters most to share your voice and share your perspective with the world. I won't interrupt anymore, but if you're interested, I'll have a link in the description box below where you can check out a lot more information about the course. So, back to the video. Before I change into the outfit, I very quickly just want to talk about the lighting because I'm actually going to try something new that I've never done before, so hopefully it'll turn out well. But the thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to place this is a table lamp behind me when I'm shooting and then I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get some pretty nice backlight. I'll just be placing this table lamp behind me so that you can't see the lamp but you'll see all the light um, and kind of like surrounding the body if that makes sense, kind of outlining the body in a way. And the reason that I want to try to do that is because I think it could give off a kind of like goddish goddess kind of vibe with the like light surrounding her and stuff like that. Hopefully we'll see. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. But we're going to try and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. I think I need to go fix this. So I kind of fixed it. It's very messy this wig, but <laughs> it's also a pretty cheap wig, so maybe that's why. But as you can see, we have the light here in the back. And as you can see, when I'm wearing this wig, it kind of lifts up a little bit around my hair and it just makes everything look a little bit more sexy. And then I'm also going to be holding these flowers right here. And I'm just going to be experimenting with the poses and seeing what works and what doesn't. And once I'm done, I'm going to explain what I did. <laughs> the reason that I'm looking at my phone all the time is because I actually have my camera connected to my phone so that I can see everything my camera sees through my phone. This feature is genius for taking self-portraits because then you don't have to run back and forth all the time. I won't get too much into the technicalities of how I shoot self-portraits because next week I'm actually going to make a video just about that. So if you want to know more about that, it would probably be a good idea to head down below and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. <laughs> and now to how I did the posing. As you saw, I adjusted the hair to look good from the angle of the camera. Majority of the light was coming from a window over in the left hand side, so I tried to turn my head a little bit in that direction for all the photos to have majority of my face facing the light. In the beginning, I just took some simple photos where I was holding the flower and looking away from the camera. After taking a couple of shots and looking at them, I didn't really like how my hands and the flowers were looking. So instead, I kind of tried to press the flowers against my chest. 
as if they actually meant something to me. With my head, I still did the same thing and just looked outside the window. Next, I decided to do some shots where I smelled the flowers, but they didn't turn out very well, so let's just skip that part. Then I came up with the idea of having one of the flowers in my mouth instead, and I actually really liked how that looked. So I did some different variations first, where I was just holding the flower with my mouth, and then some where I also held the flower with my hand. It was really just trial and error. Since I already did a detailed video on how to edit a photo to look more painterly, I'm not going to get too much into detail with it for this one. I'm just going to explain the most important steps. So if you are interested in learning more about the editing and how to edit your photos to look more painterly, I would definitely recommend checking out the other video because it is just a lot more detailed and I'll have it linked in the cards somewhere here on the video. So the first thing that I always do after a photo shoot is to review all my images and select the ones that I want to edit and use. So as you can see, I've already done that here and I ended up on these three images that I liked quite a lot. So first I edited them all in camera raw where I adjusted the colors using one of my own presets that I thought fit pretty well. I copied the same settings to all three images just to make sure that they all looked similar and then I opened them up in Photoshop. So let's just look at how I edited this one. The first thing I did was to crop the image by going over here and selecting the crop tool. Since we have a lot of empty space in each side, I'm going to make the photo horizontal to make it more just nice and compact. I think oftentimes for portraits like this, it just looks better horizontally. So maybe I should also just have shot it horizontally, but yeah, I didn't. <laughs> and now we're going to retouch the hell out of this image. So in the last video about painterly photos and how to edit them, I explained this in detail as I already <laughs> explained. So if you want to see that, you can go watch that video. But what I basically do is that I head over here to the toolbar and select the patch tool. Then you just draw a circle around the imperfection, drag the circle out to an area with more even skin and boom, it's gone. And then you just have to do this to the whole face. The next step is to draw in extra hairs to make it a little less obvious that it's a wig. And also just because drawing in hairs makes it look more painterly, it makes sense. You do this by creating a blank layer, then sampling a color from the hair with the eyedropper tool. Then you choose the brush tool and make it very small. And then you just paint in lots of hairs. This does take some time, but I promise you it's so worth it in the end. The next step is to paint with light. As I said, you'll find it explained more in detail in the other video. But you go to adjustment layers, click curves layer, then you pull up this line right here to make it brighter, and then you make the layer mask black by pressing command I. Choose the brush tool and paint in where you want the light. And afterwards, you just do the same for the shadows. Once that is done, I adjust the colors one last time and add some texture and that is really it. Here you can see the final image. I really hope you found these steps helpful. If you did, it would really just make my day if you would go down below and give the video a little like. And while you're at it, you could also subscribe if you haven't already because I post new videos every single week and hit the little bell button to be notified every time I post a new video. Push my Instagram and until next time, bye bye.